Welcome to the Big Byte Academy Online. In this class, I want to lead you through a backorder rescheduling process in SAP. First we will go through a theoretical example in a series of slides. Then I will guide you through the stock requirements list, the availability screen, the availability checks in the sales orders, and finally through backorder rescheduling. The rescheduling and reassignment of the committed quantities will be done manually. The course then concludes with a simulation of the automatic backorder rescheduling process. To illustrate the backorder rescheduling process, I would like to present an example as it might occur in the real world. Assume we have free available inventory today, of 100 pounds of a product. When an order is placed in the future, the availability check finds enough product, freely available in inventory and commits the order. Please note that a requested delivery date, far in the future, was desired by the customer. Since a one-time, full delivery is possible, we confirmed the order, by pressing the check mark, and fixed the quantity and date. This results in a reduction of the ATP quantity of 100, and a transfer of demand, to the requested delivery date in MRP. Now a new order is placed. The new order has a quantity of 50 pounds, requested to an earlier date than the first order. Since we have no more open ATP quantities, the order for 50 pounds cannot be committed or delivered to the customer's requested delivery date. Therefore we do not confirm the order. That is done by hitting the continue button. We do also not fix the quantity and date. Would we have fixed the date, the demand would have gone away, and the order would have been lost. But since we did not fix the date, the demand is transferred to MRP, and the planning run will generate a planned order, to receive 50 pounds after the replenishment lead time. Note that the second order is now late. Once the planned order is created, and therefore we can expect additional product to be received, we can run back order scheduling to see what we can do to fix the situation. The first action we take in back order processing is to unfix the first order. Once both orders are unfixed, back order processing can now split quantities and assign them to open demand. This happens in a way that all requested delivery dates can be met. In our example, back order processing has split the inventory of 100 pounds and assigned 50 pounds to the second order. Therefore, the second order can be confirmed to its requested delivery date. The open ATP quantity from inventory, 50 pounds, plus 50 pounds form a future receipt, are now allocated to the first order, which lies so far in the future, that it also meets the customer's requested delivery date. This reassignment and rescheduling can be performed either manually in transaction C006 or automatically using transaction V underscore V2. Once back order rescheduling has successfully concluded, quantities and dates must be fixed and confirmed. We will now demonstrate this example in SAP starting from the stock requirements list. We will create sales orders and follow the ATP situation throughout the process. We are looking at the stock requirements list for our sellable product. There is a forecast for March, April and beyond. An MRP was running to generate the appropriate supply in form of planned orders. As of today we have a free available inventory of 100 pounds. And the next receipt from production is scheduled for March 1st. That will bring in another 450 pounds, and our free available quantity will then add up to 550 pounds. If nothing happens before that time, let's look at the ATP situation. As we can see, our cumulative ATP quantities will increase, as receipts from planned orders add to it over time. Up until a stock transport order, due on the 18th of October, will take away from it. The transport order is for 50 pounds, and the entire quantity has been confirmed to that date. The planned order from the 3rd of June, would have increased the cumulative ATP, from 1000 to 1450, but the STO reduces it down to 1400. Going back to the stock requirements situation. We will now enter a sales order for the amount of 100 pounds. 
In this instance, the customer requests the delivery for the 17th of February, which is relatively far in the future. We have now a request to deliver 100 pounds of powder to the customer by February 17th. The system will now check, according to checking rule and checking group, if this is possible. Here is the result of the availability check. As we can see in the first section, a one-time delivery on the requested delivery date is possible. Therefore we are fixing the quantity and date. This ensures that the requested delivery date and its associated quantities, as desired by the customer, will be transferred to MRP. If we do not fix the quantity and date, then an earlier date would be requested from MRP as the date to deliver. As a one-time delivery on the requested date is possible, we have only one option to save the document. And that is to confirm the order. The order is confirmed, after you hit a check mark. And in this case, all three check marks deliver the same result. The button continue, which would allow you to save the order unconfirmed, does not even show up. We are now saving the confirmed and committed order, with one line item. Back in MD04, we refresh the screen. And the customer order will show up, with the material availability date that was calculated, subtracting transit time and loading time, from the customer's requested delivery date. Going back to the ATP quantities, we can now see that the quantities of the order were confirmed and committed. Since we had 100 pounds in inventory, and the order committed the entire stock, there is no open ATP quantity up until March, when a new receipt is planned for. Should another order come in before March, we have nothing left to promise. So let's create a second order. This time, the customer wants an earlier delivery date as before. We agree with them a delivery to the 28th of January 2013. Material number, delivering plant, and a requested quantity of 50 pounds, is maintained as a line item. After hitting enter, the system performs an availability check automatically, and branches into the availability checks results screen. This time, a one-time delivery on the requested delivery date, is not possible. Therefore, the system gives us two choices for a confirmed delivery. These are, either a complete delivery to the date, when the entire quantity will become available. Or, partial deliveries as the partial quantities become available. In our example, both these options are the same. However, to confirm the modified delivery, we need the customer's consent. But the customer does not want to wait until March. We can therefore not confirm the order. Would we click on the check mark, meaning, we would confirm the delivery to March 3rd, and leave the fixing indicator on. Then we would tell MRP, that the customer does not expect delivery before March. But the customer wants the product earlier. And if we click the check mark and undo the fixing indicator, then an earlier date is proposed for delivery, but we falsely commit quantities for the customer. And those committed quantities we don't have. Therefore, the only correct option, is to unfix, and save the order uncommitted by hitting the button continue. The sales order is saved. After refreshing MD04, the second sales order shows up in the supply and demand timeline. Since we did not fix the quantity and date, the demand comes into its earliest possible material availability date. Note that for planning purposes, the order reduces the available quantity by 50 pounds on the 24th of January. However, these 50 pounds were already promised to the first customer order. This situation creates now a shortage, and when MRP runs the next time, this shortage will be rectified. The MRP run will generate a supply proposal, as we will see in a minute. But before we balance demand and supply, let's have a look at the ATP situation. 
we can see both sales orders here, with the date when the quantities will have to be available. 1, the one for 50 is not confirmed, and the other, the one for 100, with fully confirmed quantities. The objective of back order processing is, to resolve this conflict and to get both orders confirmed to the requested delivery dates. But before we do that, we need to let the MRP run do its magic, and balance demand with supply to the right dates. The planning run, or MRP run, is usually started automatically every night. For the purpose of this example, we start the run right out of MD04. After the planning run, we refresh the screen and see a newly generated planned order to make more product. When the planned order was created, lead time scheduling took place. That type of scheduling determined, backwards through the operations of the routing, a finish date for the planned order. That finish date equals the material availability date, which was determined during availability checking of the sales order. The planning run has therefore balanced the shortage, caused by additional demand, over and above the forecast. Please note, that this planned order was not created to meet the earlier order's request, but rather to meet the later. This is, because MRP does not plan with confirmed, or non-confirmed quantities. MRP simply balances demand and supply. The allocation of specific quantities to specific orders happens in back order processing and can be seen in the ATP screen. Now the ATP situation has changed. Since a newly created planned order brings in 450 pounds to the 13th of February, the day when the later customer order needs it, there is now plenty of product available, for the customer order in January. We can now go to backorder processing and adjust the situation. The transaction for backorder processing is CO06. You have the possibility of using a different checking rule for backorder processing. Order processing uses the ATP overview, and we can easily find the unconfirmed customer order. After selection, click on Change Confirmation, and you can allocate quantities. Enter 50 pounds in the field committed, and push the check mark to allocate. Customer order 23019-692 has now 50 pounds confirmed to be available for delivery on the 24th of January. The changes are saved. Now let's go back to the customer order and perform a new availability check. Remember that the customer order was originally saved, with a requested delivery date that could not be met. Now. A planned order is in the system, and it delivers 450 pounds to the later customer order. Therefore the current inventory is up for grabs. Let's see what the availability check does. In the new situation, a one-time delivery on the requested delivery date is now possible. In order to hold that promise, we set the fixing indicator, confirm the quantities to it, and save the order. The last function we discuss in this class, is the automatic back order processing. Calling up transaction V underscore V2, you can start an automated back order process that performs various actions. As an example, you can automatically confirm all open orders to their delivery proposals, or you can set the fixing indicator, if a document fulfills certain criteria. Which actions the automatic reorder process takes, depends on your settings in a customizing transaction. Here is the selection screen for the automated back order process. You can select an individual material, 
or a group of materials in a given plant. And then select sales orders and or stock transport orders, request to see unconfirmed orders only, and prioritize in five different ways. You can also run the back order process in a simulation mode. Here is the result of the back order rescheduling process. For every document you can see newly reconfirmed quantities, and old and new dates. Because this was run in simulation mode, I have no way of saving the result. Includes the course back order processing with SAP. Thank you very much for listening. We have also added two quiz slides, on which you can test your understanding. Please take a moment to answer the questions.